Have you ever been walking in the woods or in your town and found white powder marks on the ground? Or maybe you've seen people running along yelling on on as they go. If you have, you've probably seen members of the Hash House Harriers, a worldwide unofficial network of running clubs which gathers every week to enjoy the unique sport of hashing. But what is hashing? To truly understand, we asked members of the Nittany Valley Hash House Harriers what hashing is to them. What is hashing? Is that a rhetorical question? <laughs> Hashing is a, uh, a social club. Uh, it's a great way of getting a little bit of exercise, uh, getting to drink a little bit of beer and socialize with your friends, and it's just an instant group of friends anywhere in the world that you go since there are clubs everywhere. It's a great way for uh, people of all different running abilities to uh, go out and enjoy trail together and socialize and not really compete. You're not out to try to beat each other, you're just out to uh, have a good time in the woods. Most people refer to it as a drinking club with a running problem. And so it's just a bunch of people that get together. We have a great time running and also we have a good time drinking and uh -huh. hanging out, telling jokes, picking right, right. on each other. It's a big club. Passion is a time for people to get together after a long weekend and get some exercise and see some beautiful scenery and to socialize and to have a little bit to eat and to drink a little bit of beer and to make friends. The hash started uh, in the early 1930s uh, in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia where a bunch of expatriate Brits were regularly coming together in a place called the Hash House where they had food and some social hours and they decided they needed something to do. So they went running and one day they started laying uh, trails uh, in the style of the hare and the hound. So they became then the original hash house harriers that laid weekly or bi-weekly runs. And it became pretty popular in Southeast Asia and uh, then slowly spread across the world. And as it has gotten bigger and bigger, hashers from all around the world get together to enjoy hashing at larger venues, known as the Inter-America's Hash and the World Inter-Hash. Uh, the Inter-America's Hash is a hash that's held every two years, and it's a big gathering of uh, all the North American hashes, well, South American, pretty much Western Hemisphere. Uh, big gathering, usually somewhere between uh, 500 or 1,000 hashers from all over and uh, we just have a good time for usually three or four days uh, running trails and drinking beer. Um, on the opposite years of the Inner Americas, which is every two years, they have another event that's the World Inner Hash. Last year in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, there were 6,000 hashers from all over the world there. And uh, the next one is next year in Tasmania. Even though hashing seems to be a pretty carefree sport, it is actually very organized. Before hashers can go out on a trail, a specific hasher called the hare volunteers to select a location for the hash, after which he or she needs to lay a trail for others to follow. This is where someone like Ultimate comes in. My name's Ultimate. I started hashing about 10 years ago because I was doing a little running to get into shape and a friend of mine suggested I try this and I might enjoy it, and I did. Running bores the piss out of me, to tell you the truth, but uh, hashing sort of makes a game out of it because there's a trail and we all work together to find the trail. There's no, there's no winners or losers, but instead it's a group of people having fun and, and getting a little exercise. I went out with a bag of flour and I laid a trail, seemingly random, that tried to um, keep all the runners confused and together and uh, show them some new sights. Well, I mark, with, mark it with flour and as I go along I lay dots of flour on the trail and that makes it easy to follow. And periodically along the way I put an X on the trail out of the flour and at that point that's called a check and people have to look for the true trail. 
The catch is that false trails can radiate out there from, from there too. So you may hit a dot and find another dot and it'll go a certain distance and then you'll see, say, a big F in the middle of the trail that'll mean whoops. Wait, oh, they're coming back. That's a bad sign. Oh. The cool thing is that each each hare takes it, puts a trail where they want to put it. So you go to different areas and you get different kinds of trails, some long and athletic, some tricky, some downtown through bars, some outdoors through the woods, and everything in between. Well, occasionally we have on a hash, we'll have the trail split. We'll have a turkey trail and an eagle trail. And the eagle is for the high-flying folks that want some little extra exercise. And usually the turkey trail is sort of a shortcut. I don't use those myself, but I do have opportunities along the way where I can take the slower people and point out a side trail or them and just tell them, hey, go down this unmarked trail and you'll catch up to everybody in about three minutes. Shortcut. Yeah. Shortcuts like these are useful to the slower hashers so they can catch up. While faster hashers tend to break away from the pack early, often it gets slowed by false trails like this one. Just keep going, you're almost through. Ultimately, slow or fast, everyone will finish about the same time. <laughs> if the hare does a good job laying the trail, then the hash will run smoothly from start to finish, and everything will be ready when the hashers arrive.